Recursion is a very powerful tool for a programmer, but it is often challenging to understand at first. Recursive methods are those that call themselves. When you're first learning to write recursive methods, you may feel like you're cheating. How can you call a method that you haven't written yet? Isn't it wrong to define something in terms of itself? In some sense, recursion is passing the buck. The method solves the problem by asking a different method, in this case another copy of itself, to solve most of it and then finishes it off. This is called the recursive case. The reason this works is because the recursive case keeps pushing the problem closer and closer to a base case, a problem that can be solved directly. This is what prevents the process from simply going on forever. Once we reach the base case, we compute an answer directly and then go back to each previous case building up to the final answer. A trivial example of something we could solve recursively is exponentiation. If I want to compute a to the b, I know that anything to the zero power is 1, so I can use that as a base case. For larger values of b, I know that a to the b is a times a to the b minus 1, so I can solve a to the b by first doing a recursive call to get the answer to a to the b minus 1, then multiply by a to get the final answer. When writing code, I think of two rules that correspond to the two parts of a recursive method. First, I can solve at least one small problem, the base cases. I need to have some small problem that I can solve directly. Then, if I can solve a slightly smaller problem, I can solve this one. This is the recursive case. I make a call to the same method, moving closer to the base case. I assume that my method is going to solve that correctly. Then, I use that solution to find the solution to my problem. Looking at a recursive solution to exponentiation, I see that if exponent is 0, I return 1. This is the base case, a small problem I know how to solve directly. Otherwise, I ask for the answer to a slightly smaller problem, base to the exponent minus 1. Once I have that, I can solve this problem by simply multiplying the answer to the subproblem times base. Let's step through this in a debugger. We'll compute 3 to the 4th power. We first check if the exponent is 0. 4 is not 0, so we go to the else. We're now going to ask for the answer to 3 to the 3rd power. Note we now have two copies of power running. Power 3, 4 is waiting for the answer to the subproblem. Power 3, 3 is at the top and checks to see if the exponent is 0. It isn't, so it goes to the else and asks for the answer to power 3, 2. Now we have three copies of power. Power 3, 4 and power 3, 3 are waiting for the answers to subproblems. Power 3, 2 is checking to see if its exponent is 0. It isn't, so it asks for power 3, 1. Now we have four copies of power. Again, the exponent is not 0, so power 3, 1 asks for the answer to power 3, 0. There are now five copies of power. But at this point, exponent is 0, so we can return 1. Now, power 3, 1 picks up where it left off and returns the answer 3. Power 3, 2 now computes its answer of 9, sending it back to power 3, 3, which computes 27. Power 3, 4 returns 81 to main, which prints the result. You might think that it would have been simpler just to write a for loop, and you'd be right. This example was used to help you see the process. In the rest of this series, we'll look at recursive examples that aren't as easily solved with a simple for loop, starting with anagrams.